gas chromatography. In gas chromatography, the separation occurs in a long column. The column used in gas chromatography is longer in size and coil. The column is coiled to make it fit inside a container called chamber or column oven. The length of the column is kept long for the sake of better separation. The column could be of different types like packed column and capillary column. Packed column is shorter in length and has a large diameter, while the capillary column is longer in length and has less diameter. The stationary phase is packed inside the column. In gas chromatography, the mobile phase is inert or non-reactive gas like helium or nitrogen. This inert gas acts as a carrier. The mobile phase is stored in a cylinder that is connected to the column. The sample molecules are first mixed with a volatile solvent. The mixture is then inserted into the injector which is connected to the column. Inside the injector, the mixture gets changed to vapors. The end of the column is attached to a detector. The mobile phase molecules rush continuously toward the detector. So these inert gas molecules force the mixture molecules to run toward the detector inside the column. So the mobile phase acts as a carrier in gas chromatography. High volatile molecules show no affinity towards the stationary phase, so they move faster and reach the detector first. Low volatile mixture molecules show more affinity towards the stationary phase and get attracted by the stationary phase. So they move slowly and reach the detector later. The detector detects the sample molecules which are leaving the column. It sends signals to a computer which displays these signals in the form of a graph. Different detectors can be used in gas chromatography like flame ionization detector, argon ionization detector, electron capture detector. But the most widely used detector is flame ionization detector or FID in short. FID has access to hydrogen and oxygen. It uses this hydrogen and oxygen to produce a flame. Let's divulge the working of FID. When the sample molecules pass through it, it ignites them in the flame and makes them ionized. The flame is surrounded by electrodes. The electrodes then attract these ions and send signals to the computer in the form of current. The computer reads these signals and displays them in the form of peaks on a graph. This graph is also known as the chromatograph. Area of the peak determines the quantity of that sample component in the mixture. The number of peaks shows how many components or types of sample molecules are present in the mixture. Let's understand this through examples. Suppose we have acetone as the solvent without any sample dissolved in it. When we run chromatography, we get a single peak on the chromatogram at time 1 minute. Now we add a sample of M1 molecules in acetone and run the chromatography. We receive two peaks this time, one at time 1 minute and the other at time 3 minutes. The first peak represents acetone molecules and the second one represents M1 molecules. Now let's mix a sample of M1 and M2 molecules with acetone. When we run chromatography, we get three peaks on the graph. First at time 1 minute, the second at time 3 minutes, and the third at time 6 minutes. The first peak represents acetone, the second peak represents M1 component of the sample, the third peak represents M2 component of the sample. Area of third peak is the highest. So it means the concentration of M2 is greater than M1 and acetone molecules in the mixture. Now let's take a completely unknown mixture and find out whether it has acetone, M1 and M2 molecules in it or not. 
When we run chromatography, we get a chromatogram having three peaks on it. We know the retention time of acetone M1 and M2 molecules from previous examples. Retention time is actually the time which a component of the sample consumes from its injection till scaping out of the column. In this chromatogram, the first peak appears at time 1 minute, the second peak appears at time 4 minutes, and the third one appears after 6 minutes. So it means the first peak in this graph represents acetone, the second peak represents some unknown component of the mixture, and the third peak represents M2 component of the sample. So this unknown mixture contains acetone and M2 molecules, but lacks M1 molecules. That is it for today's video. Make sure you are subscribed to the Science Entertaining. Like and share this video if you want to help others. Stay tuned. I will see you in the next video.